Welcome back to the channel everyone, it's me Alex as usual and today it is finally time to talk about my game of the year for 2022, Horizon Forbidden West. I'll try not to be too excited to talk about it, but forgive me if I fail. So, you know how there is this general consensus that no sequel will really be able to hold up to the original, and how no matter what, there will always be this person at the back of the theater yelling that the first movie was better. But talking about video games more and more in recent years, big developers managed to surpass our expectations. And Horizon Forbidden West made me think that sometimes it is actually much easier to release the first sequel of a new IP that proved to be successful. You see, Forbidden West is a perfect example of a sequel that while playing it safe, is also everything you really wanted from it. The first game was really good, a debut for a first-person shooter studio in the RPG genre. Guerrilla Games created an amazing new universe and aesthetic, with the animalistic machines roaming a post-apocalyptic world where humans return to a tribal lifestyle. Yet all their bows and spears are high-tech and are made out of parts scavenged from these sci-fi machines all around them. One of my favorite sayings, while not particularly adventurous, but nevertheless accurate, is don't try to fix what is not broken. So many times we see studios panic from player feedback and try to quote-unquote innovate and just end up omitting or ruining the things that were actually good in their previous games. Forbidden West is simple, more, better, bigger. You have more weapons that allow for even more diverse use of elemental weaknesses of enemies or creating ambushes and just generally having the right tool for every situation. You have more to explore. The world is absolutely massive and the simple but enjoyable story acts as a vehicle to drive you across a plethora of very diverse locations of all biomes. Yet, despite its size, it doesn't feel empty, because they remember to actually stuff this world with interesting terrain to traverse and varied robot habitats, and not only with your usual open world mumbo jumbo like bandit camps, but also with side quests that are now more meaningful and take a little bit more time to tell some small but original story, compared to the ones in the previous game. There is nothing really bad to say about a game that plays it so safe that it literally just took everything that was good in the first one and then improved it and made more of it. Besides, the very fact of them playing it safe. You will not be really wowed by any new stuff in this game. For example, there are now more mountable machines. There is even a flying one you can mount. But the fact of hacking and mounting machines is something that was there before, it's just a better and bigger feature this time around. And although there are additions that are entirely new, most of the game is just what was there in the first game. Just here it is so much bigger and was so well improved upon that you actually forget that it is nothing fundamentally new. And while I'm on the topic of improvement, there is a good reason why I still consider this game as my 2022's game of the year. A game that receives this title should not just be one that was so popular that majority of votes went to it because most of the voters didn't even play the other contestants. A game that becomes game of the year should somehow push the medium forward. And it is weird to say that given I just ranted about how Forbidden West is not innovating enough. But while the mechanics and story are nothing we have not seen before, the game itself is a technological marvel if you think about it. 2022 had some smashing good games, but I don't know why, maybe because I'm getting old and stingy, but nothing like blew my mind, as in never have I ever seen anything like it. But Horizon did stand out to me amongst crazy awesome things like God of War and Elden Ring, and it wasn't its technical achievement. The game is a cross-generational game, yet arguably, more than any other game, it managed to pull off an absolutely massive open world with stunning textures and unbelievable particle effects, all in 60 frames per second and decent implementation of the DualSense features. Everywhere you go you see leaves, butterflies, dust, realistic cloth effects, water and light reflections, all the visuals are just popping out at you, and the new machines, each of them has detachable parts, obviously like in the previous game. But you will notice that they always have had dozens more of smaller plates and parts that are shot off when you hit the creature. 
and some of them are now so huge and have so many more of these pieces and everything is rendered in real time. This game really impressed me in a category I have not heard a lot of people talk about. I did kind of go down on the story a bit there as well, but it is not bad, quite the opposite. It presents new mysteries and it has new massive plot twists. The ending is a bit cliche, but it is definitely not as boring as it might sound. It is a vehicle to move you through the world, but it is also a very justified and a very good vehicle for that matter. Now, I hope I managed to explain a bit why I value this game so much. And it might not be the most innovative game of 2022, but it is sure as hell the most beautiful. It is a testament to the power of the new generation and the future of graphics in games, all in the context of a game that is made so solid that you just cannot deny that it is a very good game and just getting lost in the Forbidden West. As always, for my in-depth written review of the game, visit my blog and I'll be glad to see you on my social media too. The links are all in the description.